Hello everyone, I'm Ola and this is Coding is for Girls. It's Christmas time! I'm totally one of the oh my god, oh my god, it's Christmas type of person. And I couldn't imagine not making a Christmas special for you on this channel. When I think about Christmas, one of the very first things I think about is Christmas tree. No surprise then that today I decided to talk about trees. Not necessarily Christmas trees, but computer science trees. When you learn how to program, at some point you will need to learn very basics of computer science as a science. And in that moment you will learn about two very important things, algorithms and data structures. These two things are more abstract, mathematical and more formal way to solve problems with computers. On this level it does not really matter if you program in Python, C, Haskell, Java or any other programming language. Because talking about algorithms and data structures, you go one step above the real-world problems. And instead of solving one particular problem you have, you try to solve all the similar problems at once, creating a recipe to solve all of them. In fact, I know quite a few computer scientists that <laughs> program on piece of paper, so not using the real programming language, but using some kind of programming Esperanto called soda code, and they solve more general problems. But let's go back to our trees. There is a number of different data structures out there. But wait, what is a data structure? Well, data structure is something that helps us store and organize our data, so we can access that very quickly. Imagine that you go to the library and you want to find a certain book. If the books lie around without any organization, then finding the one you are interested in is super hard. But if your library has all books sorted alphabetically, finding the one you are interested in is much easier. The same is with data structures. They help you to organize your data and keep them in order. Okay, so once we know what is a data structure, we can move to talk about trees. First, why they are called trees? Well, because when you draw them, they look a little bit like tree, but upside down. The idea of the tree is that you have hierarchical structure. For example, if you think about all the directories you have on your computer, they are in a tree structure. The most top directory on your computer is a tree root. And root directory has many subdirectories, and those subdirectories has other subdirectories, and so forth, and so forth. Let's say we are in directory named Ola. This directory contains desktop documents, download library, it's pictures, then desktop has folder docs and my stuff. Library folder has accounts, calendars, cookies and favorites. Then each of the folders has subfolders and files and so on and so on. It already looks like a tree but upside down. So we already know what is a tree as a data structure. But what makes a tree a tree? Tree consists of nodes. If we look at the directories on your computer, then each directory is a node. And these nodes have to be organized in a hierarchical structure. I think I used the word hierarchical like 10 times already. There are different kinds of tree and there are different so-called implementations of trees. But today we will not talk about all of the details because there is no time, it's Christmas anyway. Okay, so time to learn some special names and keywords that are very important when talking about trees in computer science. On the very top we have a root. This is the highest node in the whole hierarchy. You can think about them as a boss. Well, in this scenario it's just a star. Then we have a descendant or children. All nodes. Here, ornaments on our Christmas tree are siblings to each other. Our ornaments on the first level could be parents of the new nodes on next level. Well, it's kind of similar with a genealogical tree, and 
Similarly to that, we have a concept of ancestor. For this node, a star is an ancestor. Also, the immediate parent is also an ancestor. Finally, when we go down our Christmas tree, we will reach last layer of decorations. These are called leaves. They have no children and they are the youngest generation. Probably the Christmas tree analogy is not the best one, because it does not emphasize the fact that all the nodes are connected in a certain way. But honestly, I couldn't resist having a Christmas tree on one of my episodes. And I think Christmas tree analogy would work if we simply make our Christmas tree invisible. And to make it hold its Christmas tree shape, we'll need to connect all the ornaments with strings. The strings that connect parents with children in our scenario ornaments are called edges. But what if the ornament has more than one parent? Like, we would like to add an extra support and make this decoration be connected with two parent nodes. Well, this is not a tree anymore. But there is a name for it in computer science. It's called graph. Okay, we know the basics. But where are we using the trees? Are they any useful? First, it's perfect to represent any hierarchical data. Imagine how easy it is to represent SportLeak this way. It's so intuitive and so easy. Or the company hierarchy with the boss as a root. Trees are also very useful when it comes to searching. If each node contains some information and there is a certain way in which the tree was created, so you know that things with given properties are in a certain part of the tree, then finding a thing that you are interested in is relatively easy and quite fast. Like in a big library. For example, if you want to read the Harry Potter book, you enter the library, the root, you find a room that contains books that have authors' surnames starting from P to Z, then you find a bookcase that contains books with authors from R to S, and then you find a shelf with outer starting with R. And then you'll find your book. This is exactly the tree structure. And it is much more efficient than trying to check every single book in the library. There are so many places in programming and computer science where trees are used. For example, in 3D video games, trees might be used to calculate what should be displayed for you. They are also used in compression. So if you have files like JPEX or MP3, then probably some trees were involved when creating these files. There is so much more about trees. And honestly, my first scenario for this episode was so long that I would probably spend whole week just recording that and there will be like 10 videos, but I have to leave it for now because it's Christmas and I really want to spend some time with my family and friends. Okay, so time to sum up. We learned that there is something called data structures in computer science and it's something more abstract, more formal. And this is the level on which we start to notice that this is actually the science in computer science. Then we learned about trees as a data structures. Trees are hierarchical structures with nodes. One root, the most top one parent, ancestors and leaves. They are connected with edges, our string connecting parent with children. Finally, we briefly talked about where trees are used. I know it's a little bit theoretical, but if you are interested and, like me, you think it's something elegant and fascinating, go ahead and browse in the internet and learn more about it. It's really, really beautiful thing. Also, if you feel lucky, you can try to implement your tree using things we already covered in previous episodes. It won't be super elegant, but it's possible. And if you're up to challenge, just go ahead, experiment and don't be afraid to use internet in this case too. But for now, have a wonderful Christmas if you celebrate it. And if you don't, just have a wonderful time. If you want to learn how to program, make sure to subscribe my channel and stay tuned. Have a lovely day and Merry Christmas!